Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and today I want to show you kind of an interesting way that I uh, found to put feathers on a golden retriever. <laughs> the kind of the hairy bits that stick out uh, behind their elbows and on their um, lower legs and tail. I'm using this technique today on one of these little tiny dogs that I'm making for my new book, but you can also use it for larger sculptures. So let me go ahead and show you how this is done. This is how the Golden Retriever looks so far. I haven't gotten to paint him yet, but I think he's going to look pretty nice. To make this fellow, I used the Golden Retriever pattern that's going to show up in the book and just filled out all of the forms um, over a wire armature using the pattern. When it came time to actually bend him into the sitting up posture, I did need to do some major surgery. <laughs> it's always kind of fun um, just cutting into the foil where the muscles need to contract and then uh, bending the wires at the joints. And then I added uh, paper strips and paste. It's really important, especially on a small dog like this, you want to get the paper completely saturated with the paste and then press down really hard so that there's no air pockets anywhere. It's especially important when you have little dips like that right above his uh, knee. You, you don't want to have any air under there or you're going to have it, um, it's just not going to work. This doesn't take very long on something this small. Now the paper mache is dry so I actually get to get started on those feathers. I'm using a, I think it's a bounty uh, paper towel. It's a two ply paper towel. You always want to take off those cut edges because those don't blend in very well. Then I tore off a small piece making sure that it's going to be long enough to go all the way around that lower arm. Since this is a two-ply paper towel and the paper will delaminate if you don't take it apart first, uh, that's what I did. I just pulled the pieces apart, put some paste on one of them, and then pasted them back together. You might be able to get away with not doing this, but I've discovered that it, um, you, can, you can end up with some problems if you don't. And then I just smooth it all out really good, put some more paste on there, and wrap it back around that lower, um, lower leg. And then I trimmed it a little bit. There's a longer hair up by his elbow and shorter down by his wrist, so I just cut it off with some scissors. You do have problems with this particular system with the scissors. That's, that's the one problem that I'm running into because they don't like to cut very well once they've got a lot of paste stuck onto the sharp edges. So you do need to get uh, to, to make sure that there's something handy so that you can wipe that paste off on a fairly regular basis. And then, this is the fun part, you just start clipping some hair. I really had fun doing this, I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, you just clip all the way down, you make sure that the two pieces are stuck really nicely together of course, and then you're cutting through uh, both layers of paper. And Then I like to go back over and just kind of ruffle them up a little bit so that they uh, separate a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put some on his tail too. Those are mustard seeds, by the way, that I'm using for his teeth. I haven't quite decided if that works or not. And here I'm doing the same thing to his tail. Trimming it up first and then cutting it. You can see how it's... It, <laughs> those are really, really sharp scissors and they, they do take a little bit of work. I should have cleaned them off just a little bit before I started doing that. Um, if you can figure out a way to make that an easier process, um, please let me know. When the tail was all done, I went ahead and sat it down on a piece of plastic to make sure that um, it, that he would sit flat on the table, otherwise uh, that the tail feathers could have gotten in the way. And now I get to do the fur on the body. Um, I just did this with uh, the homemade gesso. That's the recipe on my blog in the, in the paper mache recipe tab. Um, that's made out of joint compound and Elmer's glue. There's no real recipe, you just kind of do half and half. And then I turned the brush around and as you can see right now I'm using the back end uh, to actually inscribe some fur. And here's how he turned out. As soon as I get him painted I'll put a photograph up on my blog. Um, and then I'm hoping that you'll tell me whether those teeth worked or not. I'll have a close-up so you can see how it turns out when it's painted. This is the Irish Setter. Um, it's also got some really nice feathering, especially on the chest. I really like that. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that and that you can use this in one of your own projects. Uh, if you've been doing anything interesting, if you've built anything um, with anything, it doesn't even have to be paper mache. We just want to know what you're doing and um, just share. Uh, come on over, um, join the conversation, ultimatepapermache.com. I'd love to see you there. Bye-bye. <laughs>